Meta mesh, pit mesh. That's that's definitely the cool thing of the week. So there is a startup in town. Uh, came out of Hack Pittsburgh, still in Hack Pittsburgh, uh, and they are building a mesh network, and that is really really super important. And what is a uh, Hack Pittsburgh for those that don't know? So Hack Pittsburgh is in the basement of Startup Town, and it's a uh, it's a space where you can go and hack things and not like computer hacking not necessarily software hacking but like life hacking or hardware hacking and, and things like that so it's a, a bunch of guys that um you know have an association with with startup town and uh go down there and, and do cool things with 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 what with what is out there that's a lot of that is a lot of right wait there. is that <laughs> I saw a picture of this, I think, on Twitter. Yes. That's the, one of the antennas, isn't it? Yes. That's the antenna ah. on the front of the hardware store now. And it is uh, phallic and profound. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but more importantly is just this general idea of what a mesh network is. It's this really cool way of creating free wireless infrastructure. So everybody owns their own access point anyway. What if those access points could talk to each other and recognize each other and figure out a way to provide a path to uh, wireless internet from that communication between the access points? So anybody who buys an access point that's been flashed with the code that these guys are writing for the mesh network will auto-recognize any other mesh network in range and provide more geographic coverage of the free wireless internet. Very cool. So it's this organic, independently owned network that sits on top of, 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 of a city or a neighborhood and even potentially the entire country. If you could like, remember like hands across America and like, in like the eighties, right? Like it's hands across America, but for wireless internet. That's handy because uh, I, I know cell service is particularly bad at the top yeah. of the hill there for some reason. <laughs> no, well, we can probably figure out why. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah, of course. Um, but, uh, but so how does that work for like, if, if I'm there by, well, once, what's the range, first of all, like if you just have one up? So um, we're not 100% sure. So that's, they're pretty big antennas. Mm -hmm. um, and they want to have really good coverage up there because this is essentially their, their, um, their launch neighborhood and they want to make sure that it's awesome, like an awesome cast, but for Wi-Fi. Um, so we're doing them every two blocks, I believe those guys are putting them up and kind of staggered across streets, right? So one side of the street, other side of the street, one side of the street. Uh, this is all done through a URA grant. Uh, and so the URA gave those guys some money to build this pilot mesh network. And the city of Pittsburgh is super interested in it, right? And everybody's super interested in it because who wants to pay for wireless infrastructure? Like that would be a millions and millions of dollars to do wireless infrastructure across the city. Sure, you could contract some big company to come in and do this, but mm -hmm. this is a, an organic way to grow it. Like this is a way for everybody to get in on it. Um, what does this, this might be an outside the box question. Maybe you don't have an answer for this. Maybe it's more for them. Um, but does this, because we've heard about municipalities putting in like, broadband because like Verizon or Comcast isn't providing mm -hmm. in that area. Mm -hmm. um, is there any concern of this getting in the way of those? Because uh, Pennsylvania in particular, I know um, they have restrictions on that because Verizon or whatever made enough noise. You can get in those politics, but, sure. uh, uh, but, but is this, is this outside the box with that? Cause I guess you're not exactly provide, you're providing access. So but, there's a couple ways to look at this. Yeah, because uh, I mean, you, you're, yeah, you're like, we're, we're, we're talking about like you have your FiOS or your Comcast in the building and it's hooked up to that, right? If, if I get that right? Uh, maybe. It could I'm, go any way, I'm right? technical, I know. But. It, uh, so, you know, the thing about mesh networks is that they're just a network. Yeah. And they don't necessarily even provide access to the internet unless somebody ports it to their internet port. Okay. So think about this from a city services perspective. A horrible catastrophe happens in the city of Pittsburgh. All the lights go out, but all these mesh network antennas are on battery backups. Yeah. That's a, a independent network that has the lights on no matter what's going on with everything else in city infrastructure. So chat functionality, video conferencing, video, voiceover internet protocol, right? Anything that you can run on a regular network or on, on the internet, you can now run on this independent battery, battery backed up uh, wireless infrastructure now to get to the internet somebody's got to donate bandwidth and that bandwidth can come from any business class uh internet connection right okay so I mean, like I, I can't do it from my house but but you could i would think comcast would be mad at you that, that's, i'm sure there's a tos problem in there just <laughs> like probably like, just like, like running like i'm pretty sure i wasn't supposed to run that shoutcast server out of my house 10 that, years that's ago. probably yeah. true yeah. and you're probably not sure it's a bit torrent <laughs> like gigabytes of like 
you know, Game of Thrones. Exactly. Like 4K, exactly. Like original 4K Game of Thrones footage well, or anything and, like that. And how does that work from a from the respect of if someone donates bandwidth, what happens if then someone does torrent or is that blocked somehow? Yeah, so that's or? all flashed on there very, very intelligently. Okay. So uh, somebody in the street can't take your bandwidth if you're doing a ha- high bandwidth application inside your home. Okay. So the guys have written bits of code that say, well, I'm going to donate 20% to the street. Okay. Uh, uh, and then if something is going on inside the hardware store that requires a lot of bandwidth, that's just going to get shut off for oh. some period of time. So like, like, like ideally, say we had a business class here and I want to do mesh here in beach view in yeah. my house. Uh, I could say, you know, Hey, Tuesday nights, we're just going to kill it, kill that extra bit. Yeah. So it's going to supposed to be smart enough to do it automatically. Yeah. So if it sees that you're pulling and streaming and doing all that if kind I'm, of stuff, if I'm sitting here legally watching game of Thrones and I need the bandwidth, it'll, it'll, it'll uh, dither, compensate. Dither it down. <laughs> now, all of that said, um, we think this, this is a disruptive idea. Mm-hmm. And we think that eventually somebody's going to be very irritated by it, right? Because a lot of people have a lot of stake in telecommunications and have been building out what we consider legacy systems, right? Like mm-hmm. these old, big, archaic chunks of infrastructure. And the rate at which this technology is changing is going to essentially create obsolescence for all that stuff. And in that, there's, I'm sure, going to be legal battles as well. But being this early in, I think that we're going to have a couple of years of awesome growth and awesomeness associated with it well, and what but i guess my my question too was what keeps someone that's using the mesh network from torrenting or from doing something illegal Not, well, nothing. nothing what keeps okay. you from going to starbucks and doing something illegal right. other than their terms of service and whatever sort of firewalls that they may or may not have in place right yeah. uh so you know that's a real interesting sort of question for um, how law enforcement is going to even keep up, right? Like mm-hmm. if you have all this free wireless internet access and people doing horrible things, then how do you how do you regulate that? Now everything's still recorded, right? Like IP addresses, right. uh, all that stuff still gets still gets logged. So theoretically, like if you do something stupid on your phone on a mesh network, I'm I'm pretty confident that the NSA or FBI could deduce whose phone it was. Right. Uh, that would just be a hunch. I don't have any real data to back that up. Uh, but no, it's 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 um it has the potential to reshape and position Pittsburgh as being a very progressive leader, uh, in this in this sort of hardware side, right? So there's about there's you know there's very few of these in the world. All the big ones are in are in the cool hip liberal progressive Nordic countries uh, for some reason, <laughs> right? And what I think oh, one those in Ham- Nordics Nords, and I think one, <laughs> and I think one in Hamburg also. And there's a few uh, popping up in in big metropolitan areas like Brooklyn and in Chicago and stuff like that. But little Allentown, the little neighborhood that could is gonna uh, have the first one. And you know, from our perspective, giving information to uh, to people that are are, are economically distressed is is a huge part of of of, of turning those situations around.